Rahi. Um, a VP R and D at Imagine. And Imagine is a small startup I co-founded in the field of personalized medicine. We all love Python, and probably that's why we have a great community and we are all here. Uh, the syntax is simple, it's very powerful, it can be a really good language uh, to be for a first developer. Um, yeah, there will be a lot of memes. So it's a really good language for a get, uh, new developer. It's a re really powerful language for experts as well. It has ton of modules, open source uh, code, and really great community. People are using Python for everything from object, functional aspect oriented programming, web development, data science, um, DevOps, uh, infrastructure. But like every great thing in the world, it has its drawbacks. And we're going to talk about a few. Um, so in this talk, we're going to talk about packaging and deployment and some of its drawbacks. So yeah, dependency management is lacking. And there is no clear way to package and deploy your services. Yeah, some of you might think about frameworks which are more clear and it's easier to build a framework today, but if you have an application, a server, or service that you want to bring to production, there's no clear way to package and deploy that. We do love Python, so let's try to see it from an example. Uh, let's solve a real world problem uh, with Python and then we can see most of the problems with packages and deployments. So let's build a script that comes to 10, and it's a simple one. Let's start with something simple, client server, REST API, MySQL, you know, simple. So I opened a new project in GitHub, and server counting to 10, and I want to start writing my code, but I need to choose my project structure, you know? There are many project structures out there. Some people are using requirements.x, some people are not, some people are using SAP API. Where should I put my code in? Is it in the main directory? Or should I create a SRC directory? Some, some project creates a directory in the same name of the project. Where are my tests? With my code in a separate directory, but let's choose at random, you know, because that's probably the best way. And so choose one. Still not writing our code and uh, needing some dependencies. Uh, I've chosen Flask. Uh, Flask is a really minimal uh, web framework which allows you to create REST APIs. So pip install Flask. And oops, uh, I did it again. <laughs> I always forget creating our virtual environment. So virtual environment is a really cool project which allows you to create isolated a Python dependency. And you, using virtual environment, you are able to install multiple dependencies um, with, for different projects and have them in the different versions or have two applications with the same, um, with different dependencies. I did install it on my uh, system and pip didn't warn me. And now I have Flask on my actual system. So let's start using virtual environment. So I'm upgetting install Python virtual environment, creating a virtual environment. And now I'm going to use requirements text file. You know? So I'm putting each of my dependencies in our requirements text. So we have Flask, and we have to have a MySQL, of course, because we are counting to 10. Now we are probably are ready, and we can start writing code, right? Because a pip install our requirements. But no, still not working. We got an error. It says, I tried to install MySQL Python, and it's not working. It says MySQL config not found. What will we do? Ask Google, right? Google is your best friend, and probably Stack Overflow has all the answers. So one of the most repetitive questions and answer out there, oh, I need to install leave my SQL dev. Of course I need uh, some other system dependencies. No problem. Let's do that. But because our solution is so simple, uh, we will also would like to use an ORM, you know? Uh, we're counting to 10, so I call pip freeze, and, and we can see currently our Flask, our Flask version is 0 0.8. I installed Flask SQL Alchemy, which is our, our ORM, and it actually changes us, our, our Flask version without even asking us. Flask actually changes its API between 
0.8 and 10, and now our code is not working, we will only find out when we test, which means in production. Let's write the actual code, because it's a simple one. So you can see I'm importing Flask and saving a number, and created a route that increment that number and returned it. So, oops, state, state server, not stateless, but state forward. So need to move that to SQL. But let's say that was version one. So version one is done, and we want to bring that to our clients. And in order to do that, we need to package and deploy that to our production environment. And so, of course, that, that should be fairly easy. We have only one service, so I want to choose the simplest solution, but we still want to have a highly available solution, which means we will install it on multiple machines. Not using something fancy, we'll just go in each machine, and creating a virtual environment, installing dependencies there. Don't forget your system dependencies as well. Pray the code will work. And some of you might automate that process, right? And, you know, because we don't want to do stuff manually. So you're using Chef or Ansible or Fabric or Solstack or any other solution to automate your processes. And, but you still are doing the same thing just automatically. You're going into a production environment, building, git pooling or cloning your code, building your dependencies, installing your, your system dependencies, and praying. So we run that on two machines, actually succeeded on one machine, and fail on a PyPy timeout on the other, bummer, but still half of our responses are working, so we we'll see half of the numbers. So what can we learn from that? We want to build once, deploy anywhere. Of course, that, that, that should be fairly easy. And our Python application, or some of our dependencies, need some system dependencies as well. Why not use native packages? And we use them every day. We already, in this talk, actually installed, we did upgrade install Python virtual environment and used native packages in order to install virtual environment. Most of our open source project and infrastructure is using native packages. If you're going to install Nginx, you're probably going to do sudo apt-get install Nginx and suffer from some mm -hmm. vulnerabilities, but never mind. <laughs> Um, OK, so let's use native packages. Uh, they are solving our problems. So again, I am an Ubuntu fan, so I'm going to talk about Debian, but uh, just as well as RPM or any Mac users out there. So Debian package is a single artifact which includes all our code, all our dependencies as well, and will allow us to actually in build our code once, have a single bundle artifact, which we'll be able to install anywhere. Also, as a part of any native package management solution, you could say which are your system dependencies, meaning, oh, this package is dependent on another system dependency. In our example, it might be called client dev. So how could we do that? So virtual environment has a really cool feature, um, which is called relocatable. Relocatable allows you to move your virtual environment. So I don't know if any of you try to move your virtual environment or copying it to another place, you would probably fail, or you will succeed, but it won't work, because most of the paths or Python paths are obsolete. So calling relocatable, making your uh, virtual environment relative, and allow you to move it, copy it, or put it in a dev or any other native package. I'm, again, a Linux fan, so I'm using FPM and didn't give any uh, Windows solution for you guys. I chose FP. So you might say, oh, Debian packages. It's hard to create Debian packages. I need to create a special directory with multiple files and have my license and control and explain how to create Debian. But uh, today we have a lot of simpler solutions. So I'm going to show FPM. FPM is a really cool command line tool uh, which allows you to create Debian or RPM or any other native package in Linux in a single command. Uh, all you need to do is fpm minus s source the type of package that you want to source from, let's say a directory, a virtual environment directory. Um, you can put in the source 
a lot of options like Debian, RPM, or any other in order to change native packages from one to a different uh, OS environment. And in the minus T, I'm going to choose Debian, list your sources, and state your uh, native package, uh, other native packages dependencies as well. Um, in FPM, there is more than 100 options um, that you can add. Uh, it's really flexible. You can add a post install or, or pre install and so on. Also, it generalizes native packages, so you could use a single option for all of your environments. But if you're specific for a single environment, it does expose all of the options for RPM or specifically Debian. So how would that look? There is a minor change from what we did so far in Git Pool and Pray. So we are still creating a virtual environment, activating that, installing our dependencies in Python Setup UI. Calling relocatable so we could move or uh, copy our virtual environment into a different location. All we need to add are those two lines in the end, relocatable, which have to be in the end because each time you install, change the path again, and FPM. So here there is an example where FPM directory to deb, use that package, create package Debian, and add those system dependencies. So quick note, FPM is a Ruby gem, not an actual gem. And if you're religious about Python, you could choose stdeb or pytodeb or Spotify have open source their make solution, which is called DH virtual environment, which also creates Debian packages from setups py or my favorite FPM, a very opinionated person. So just to summarize what we did in native packages. So we added the Jenkins or again, open source, uh, or e uh, a different uh, build system, uh, and created a single bundle native package from our dependencies, from our project. And now we can install it anywhere. But still, our production environments and build machine are messy with different system dependencies. So let's say a developer would accidentally remove leave my SQL client dev. When will we find that out? Anybody has any clue? Only in a new machine installation. So installing that package on the same machine already has the, the dev dependencies that you need, meaning a machine that add version one already add leave my SQL client in our example, or your dev dependency, and a new machine would not, meaning our test didn't actually check all aspects of our package management, which means production still works. So what can we learn from that? Deployment method should be fully reproducible, leave um, our production environment as green as possible, and you all need to be more green. And also when in testing package management solution, you're probably going to need to use a new instance or a clean instance each time. Our git pull and pray added a virtual environment which allowed us to bundle our dependencies as well. Our, upgets, our native package solution included the pre-build th those dependencies and saved them, and also informed the package manager which other system dependencies do we need. Still, we need a cleaner solution, which helps us uh, have a new instance all the time. Uh, Docker is a container service which allows you to create lightweight virtual machine, which is, has a clean environment. Uh, it's a package that is uh, always run the same because uh, it's an image. And has an app isolation for CPU and memory and all your system. So you might say, yeah, I know Docker, I heard it, a community fan like you, but Docker is a big change in my production. We already have an automated solution that does git pull and pray. We will need to add a Docker registry uh, that we'll need to learn. And our developers don't know Docker, so they will need to learn in order to have Docker in production. That's not cool for us. So maybe you could start by using Docker on your build machine. It's easy. If you're using Jenkins, and that's my example, I'm showing you your Jenkins Docker plugin, which allow you to, it's an easy installation with two clicks, you install your Jenkins, enable it on the job, and allow you to run each of your tasks, if it's a build or testing task on your Jenkins machine in an isolated Docker container. What it actually does is running a container, installing Jenkins in it, 
um, running a Jenkins slave, running your uh, actual job, and then purging th that image. If you want to save the image for manual QA or something, you, you could, but that way you run each time, each task or each test on a new instance. So, so far we actually solved the latest problem that we had in native packages because if we, we in two clicks you run your uh, build in a Docker instance and it w actually the build will fail when the developer will accidentally remove the the, your dev dependencies. Because when you will try to install MySQL Python, you will not have that, that dev dependency. So we actually solved all our problems. Um, so you could try only using Docker on your build machine. Probably your developers, after using Docker on your build machine, will fall in love. And you would say, let's use Docker as our package management solution. Why not? So all we need to change is, instead of creating a Debian, let's create a Docker image and use that in production. In order to create a Docker image, you have a Docker file, a really simple Docker file, which explains how to create the image. And it actually runs and creates um, an image for each command. So here we have uh, installing our Live MySQL dev installing our requirements, and running our app. Do we still need virtual environment when using Docker? So you might say no. Uh, I'm saying no too, but some people are religious about their virtual environment. Yes, we saw a few people using virtual environment in Docker, but you could that could be good for people, uh, developers, then when they use develop their code in their own machine, they're using virtual environment, and that's easy error. If you're using it for pray, you need to only change uh, a single line into your uh, build machine uh, and creating the, those packages, FPM and the, the line that we saw. And probably you could remove a lot of code from your automation, so you now don't need to SSH to your machine, creating a virtual environment, installing dependency. You only need to up get install your application just like any other application, other infrastructure application that you are installing automatically. If you're, you are, you, most of you heard about Docker, and it's probably a risk or a time-consuming thing to move to Docker, but getting familiar with Docker in a build machine is easy way to start. Start there, grow from there, and you will fall in love. Some resources we used. Uh, this talk was in, in memory of a good friend of ours, an amazing guy called Woody Brill, uh, which died last month and doing something he loves. Uh, and he also was a great Pythonista. Uh, so the question was, is native package solution as any advantages over Docker solution? So from a developer standpoint, probably no. But if you're currently already as automation in your system, uh, it's a big jump to jump into Docker. And you probably don't want to spend all the time, again, building your automation. And moving to a package management solution is a really quick jump and solving a lot of your problems and make it, making all your artifacts more reliable. So the question was, do we use Docker for development as well? Do we have a Docker file for production and a Docker file for um, development environment? So after getting familiar with Docker, um, we use Docker all the time. Um, when I built this presentation, I wanted to check um, Debian dependencies. I just run Docker and add a clean environment all for testing packages. Yeah. Uh, we currently don't have uh, Docker for testing and Docker for, for production, but we do run um, an integration environment of Docker files on the developer machine. Uh, we have a different solution for configuration management, so the same Docker file can run on the on a developer machine and on production. So the the question was, is there a way uh, to to work in an SRC directory and still uh, have a package name? Um, so. I'm not sure about the, the answer, and I'm thinking yes, because the name of the package uh, when building a model is inside the code, so you could probably work around that, but um, 
the direct structure is so you could just can you give an example why would you like that creating namespaces and not have any empty directories um, yeah it's a problem that we suffered as well and um, what we did is just start separating projects until it was too messy and start merging some of them back <laughs> Um, but uh, you can just create different packages for, like, have, a, have another folder inside which uh, put the different uh, packages. So, thank you.